Hi, this is uh, Richard Burke Jones. I'm in my studio in Newburyport, Mass. And I'm going to uh, talk today a little bit, make it rather quick, about the materials that I use when I do my historic illustrations. So, um, starting right into it, probably the most important thing, or at least one of them is, what I used to draw with. I used to use a traditional pen and ink where you dip the pen in the ink and I would work on paper and then someone gave me the idea to work on mylar. Mylar is um, a plastic. Here it is here. It comes in rolls and um, my illustrations tend to be very large, three by four feet say, and I'll put one sheet or I'll even tape two sheets together and I put it on a piece of foam board much like you can see behind me and I'll clip it using clips and um, that has worked um, well for me. I, what I use for pens, I use Micron pens um, that are uh, have archival ink, and I use numbers um, one or zero one all the way to zero five, and I like two and three for most of the drawing. Uh, fine lines are one or even less than that, and maybe a thicker line with a four or five, and um, it dries very quickly and it uh, it serves its purpose. So uh, if you're like me, if you're like everybody including even Leonardo da Vinci, everyone makes mistakes in their drawing. So how do you correct it? One great advantage to mylar is if you um, on a q-tip and then um, just wet the surface that you want to erase on um, on the mylar, you can lift off the mistake, the pen and ink, and um, I generally do that with a kneaded eraser, or you can do it even with a paper towel, but it works beautifully and um, that is a great advantage over working on paper. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but here's my trusty little uh, kneaded eraser, and it's really a wonderful thing you can use it if you're drawing in charcoal or pencil or whatever, but um, you can make a wedge out of it and it becomes a very fine line. Uh, very helpful. I've used it over the years. And um, yes, I use a ruler. It's not cheating to use a ruler. I use this, um, but you can use anything. This has some circles in it and some squares in it that I use occasionally. But generally, it's got a bevel, beveled edge. Um, so. Uh, that edge it becomes important and you want to be careful sometimes that you don't drag it over ink that is not uh, completely dry or it smudges obviously. Another thing I use because um, if you're drawing in ships or uh, the bow of a ship I have this um, bendable ruler if you will that um, you can use right on the mylar and um, you can get it into all sorts of different shapes and it really comes in handy. I don't use it a lot, but uh, I do use it. Another thing that I use is a simple uh, magnifying glass. Um, if you are looking at a photograph or you're looking at something that you need to uh, work on the detail, it helps your eyes uh, quite a bit. So. So moving over here to um, the foam board, I have it um, on my easel standing up. I work two ways. I work uh, on the easel and I work on a drafting table. And um, I have a mall stick here, I have sort of a large one I've taped together. And um, I literally, you can just literally uh, steady your hand on it and um, draw in whatever you're drawing. Um, probably more than that, I'll just stand here, if you will, and um, if I'm going to do some um, slates on a roof, I literally would just work like this. It, um, does it look tedious? Um, I suppose it depends on your personality. For me, um, I get into a mode and it almost is therapeutic, uh, somewhat meditative even. Um, in some, I'll just draw uh, freestyle if you're drawing in cobblestones. So um, that's.
that's how I work on an easel. I'll show you how I work on a drafting table. So here's the drawing on a drafting table, and I've taken the clips off. So one great advantage is, is that if you want to work all over, you can just drag it forward, and um, it's much closer. And, for example, if I want to work on a roof like this, you know, it allows me to sit or stand, and um, I want to move the drawing around if I want to work back here and um, just work on some figures, if you will. You can um, have a great deal of flexibility. It makes working um, much easier. The next step in uh, the process, the materials I use is if I um, have done the drawing and um, I want to do some studies before I dive into the large painting. So I'll, I'll often print, I have an Epson 7800 printer which is a high-end printer and I eventually make my G-Clay prints on that. But uh, it's very helpful and very useful to uh, be able to have a printer when you're working with this process. And so here I printed off a section of a drawing and then what I did was I stapled it down to homosote. And I don't know if you can see, but I put shellac over it so that I made sort of a, a, a surface that I could work on with oil paint. And here's um, a study of the sky I did. And you can tell I didn't finish it for whatever reason, but I still have it in the studio and I wanted to show um, how um, I go about doing some of my studies. Here's another larger study for another section of that same painting, actually. Um, I painted it out. Um, I didn't completely finish it, but it allows me to work on the lights, the colors, um, a lot of things that uh, cause the ultimate painting to go much quicker. And um, here's another brief study, if you can see it, of another section of that painting. So the next step, um, once I have the drawing done and I've done these studies, here's a study. You can see it's the same size, literally. It's on paper, shellac paper. Um, is that I have, uh, I used to, you can transfer the pen and ink drawing to canvas. This is oil on canvas, or the old fashioned way with graphite paper. And I have done that, but my drawings take six months or so. And it would take me way too long to transfer it. So I have it done professionally. And um, you can get that done at um, many commercial shops. And it's not overly expensive. And I have it done right on the canvas. And then um, I, again, um, you don't have to, but I, I put um, a sizing, a shellac or something on the canvas. Shellac is typically what I use. And that, again, keeps um, the drawing in place. And it also keeps the um, colors, the oil on canvas, on the top. Um, even though it's a sized canvas. And uh, then I go at it and paint away. Um, I grab this, of course there's no frame on it. I grab it and I go right out with a um, very traditional easel. It's a French easel. And I've tried different types of easels. Any easel will work as long as it doesn't, um, is, as long as it's uh, sturdy, particularly in the wind. The wind is your enemy outdoors. So in any event, uh, we've covered pens, we've covered the mylar, we've covered um, the uh, transfer, we've covered um, how I do my studies, and uh, that's generally how I work. There's not too much mystery to it. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a project. It, um, it is something that you just, um, in an iterative way, you work, keep working on it until you're done. And um, at the end, if you've done your studies, you're not going to end up with too much of a surprise, and hopefully uh, the whole thing has a tremendous amount of impact uh, to the viewer. And then, uh, in my case, I go on and make prints, uh, numbered prints, G-clay prints. So in any event, uh, thank you so much, and um, hope you learned a little bit.